Hi everybody, Riley from InMusic here. Today I'm going to cover some assembly and setup tips for the pads and cables of your Alesis, Command Mesh, or Crimson electronic drum kit. These tips can help you prevent common problems and extend the life of your kit. First things first, let's get the drum rack assembled. Completely unbox all parts included in your kit, and simply follow the picture guide in the assembly instructions included with your kit to put the drum rack together. If you need a copy of the picture guide, I've provided a link to it down in the description. Keep in mind that the exact angle of each piece of the rack doesn't need to be adjusted perfectly just yet. You'll get a better sense of exactly where each piece of the kit needs to be aligned after you mount the pads. Speaking of, now that our rack is set up, let's learn how to properly mount the pads. When mounting your pads, make sure that the sides of each pad aren't in contact with each other or the drum rack. If they are, the force that's transferred through the pads and rack while you're playing the kit can result in double triggers, ghost triggers, or missed triggers. Additionally, when mounting the cymbal pads, make sure to remove the felt washers from the bottom of the pads. After you place the cymbal on the cymbal stand, put the felt washer on top of the cymbal before fastening it to the stand. Be sure to do this for all cymbals, as the felt washers will not only make the cymbals more secure on their mounts, but also protect them from damage that would be caused by the cymbal repeatedly hitting against the fastener while the kit is being played. Now that your pads are mounted, it's time to tighten the heads of the pads. The drum heads are intentionally left loose for shipping purposes. This is to prevent damage to the heads in case of expansion and contraction due to temperature changes during shipment. Use your kit's included drum key to tighten the heads. To keep the amount of tension across the head equal, use a diagonal clockwise pattern while tightening the screws, just like you would when tightening an acoustic drum kit. So I'm going to start with the snare drum, which has six screws. I'll start at the top left. Using my drum key, I'll tighten it at least half of a turn. Then I'll tighten the bottom right screw, which is diagonally across from the one we started on. Then I'll move to the top right screw, then the bottom left, then the left center, and finally the right center. Using the same technique, tighten the screws on the toms and the kick drum. These pads only have four screws, which makes the diagonal tightening process even simpler. Be sure not to over tighten the screws, as this can overstretch the head and damage it. Again, for right now, make sure each screw is tightened at least half of a turn of the drum key. When setting up the kick drum and kick pedal, make sure to align the beater so that the felt side is facing away from the kick pad. The hard plastic side of the beater will connect with the kick pad more consistently, providing a better overall response. The soft felt side of the beater will cause the mesh kick drum head to wear down more quickly and can otherwise damage it. Now that the pads are mounted and your kick and hi-hat pedals are situated, feel free to adjust the angles of each piece of the rack more precisely, including the pad mounts and cymbal stands. Now that the rack and pads are assembled, let's get the cables connected. Before doing this, make sure all cables in the included cable snake are untangled if necessary. First, take the summed end of the cable snake and thread its cables through the slot in the drum module mount, just to the left of the hi-hat stand. Next, take your drum module and connect it to the summed end of the snake. Then use the included screws to fasten the module to its mount. Now, begin running each cable to its appropriate pad, starting with the hi-hat. The cables are labeled at the ends in accordance with the drum voice they correspond to in the drum module. Be sure not to wrap any cables around each other, as this can cause drum triggering issues while playing the kit. Use the Velcro straps to secure the cables to the rack, starting at the left side of the rack near the hi-hat stand. Repeat this process, working your way around the kit until all cables are connected to their corresponding pads and pedals and secured to the drum rack with the Velcro straps. Now all that's left to do is to plug your drum module into a power outlet with its included power adapter, plug in a pair of headphones or external speakers, and grab a seat behind your kit and start jamming. For more resources on using your Alesis drum kit, be sure to check out our video on understanding and adjusting the drum trigger settings on these kits. The link is down in the description. 
If you need further assistance with using your kit, head over to alesis.com forward slash support, where you'll find the Alesis knowledge base and a portal to reach out to the Alesis technical support team. Thank you so much for tuning in.